Number 16, whole lot to cover. As you can see, we've got the chassis turned on jack stands. Just a note about putting a bare chassis on jack stands. When you do, level it up, and it's a whole lot easier to reference to everything uh, in the future. Got the chassis on jack stands. We should have painted it, should have uh, uh, lizard skinned it, but I want to do some test fitting. I want to look at some stuff. I want to see some things that I cannot see in the computer design programs, and I want to look at some things on some tolerance stack on this thing. Um, tolerance stack, uh, for instance, here on this front snout bar, you can see here the chassis comes out this far, but there's going to be another bar. Just temporarily do this. Temporarily. You can see the rib nuts embedded in that. see was I know what the outside dimension is supposed to be here but I wanted to see if it's actually there. Another thing that I wanted to look at tolerance stack on this scoop the height of this is absolutely critical and we were arriving at the height here by the height of the motor mounts plus the height of the block plus height of the manifold and so forth and then you have all these dimensions here. This piece that goes here bridges back to here so you get all these dimensions timed all these dimensions and if the tolerances are off uh, even a little bit it's a pretty bad deal but they don't have to be off a whole lot. Tolerance stack, just to give an example for instance if you take a yardstick and mark every inch at the end of it, you're at 36 inches. But if you took it and you marked an inch and you moved it and marked an inch and moved it and marked an inch, if each movement is off two thousandths of an inch, which is less than a human hair, that's uh, 36 times two thousandths, that's 72 thousandths, which is the same thing as seven hundredths, which is more than a sixteenth of an inch. Tolerance stack can add up in a hurry even when you're just adding up human hairs. All of this is really nice, really where I want it. Let me show you something here. The top of that scoop is supposed to be at 36 inches. 30, 30 inches, some, some kind of even number. Across here, that's going to the top of the frame rail. That frame rail is an inch and a half tall. 28 and a half inches, absolutely perfect. So that is, that is where I want it, but it was worth putting that engine in to find out before I painted it, got everything done, figured out I'd done something wrong. Uh, especially considering I can get that engine in and out of there in a couple of minutes. This is the fan shroud, or the radiator shroud, the fan shroud, the uh, front uh, evaporator for the air conditioner piece. It's going to go right in here like so. There's going to be another piece aluminum piece that ties this together for this front snout bar which is removable and replaceable in case of a crash but that, that front snout bar we're still revising the body just a little bit to make it absolutely right because it catches the top of the fender holes the front of the body out. I want to show you this piece right here it's made out of three pieces it's our ABS stuff check this out three and a half pounds Three and a half pounds, all those brackets. That's pretty cool. It's three pieces. I want to kind of show you how it goes together. This is an old scrap piece. Like everything else on this car, it's been built a few times before I got it the way I wanted it, but you can see from this, there's the ABS piece laid out flat. I'll fold all of this up, bend it up, rivet it up. That starts becoming this shape right uh, right here like this. That rivets to this back piece. These little pieces right here come up and seal the radiator. Uh, it's not symmetric like this because there's uh, radiator lines going through there. But uh, once this is done, 
this absolutely perfectly seals all of the radiator to the shroud. This right here goes in here like so. Make sure I've got it right side up. Yep. Like this. These will be uh, riveted and glued permanently. But for now, I just want to clecko it to, and I did it backwards. I just want to clecko it to, uh, still got it backwards, still backwards. There we go. Just want to clecko it to uh, show it how it all goes together, but again, that'll be riveted and glued behind it to hold all of this on. I guess if I put my glasses on, that'll help too. We've got a whole lot to cover here. This thing, YouTube cuts us off at 15 minutes. If this thing starts running uh, 13 minutes or so long, tell me. We'll make two parts out of it. That's better when I can see what I'm doing. Well, I thought it was. Yeah. Okay. The fan trail. on something like that. See that starts to ridge it up. This is an AFCO radiator. It's what I've used in all of my mid-engine builds. It's only 16 inches tall. It's 28 inches wide. It has a bleed valve instead of a uh, radiator cap on the top, which is what you want on a system where that's lower than the, the engine itself. This is a double pass radiator. You see that weld right there? The fluid comes in here, it goes over here, it comes down, and then it goes back through the radiator again. This will keep one of these cars cool, idling all day in the summertime in Texas. It goes in here like so. Another thing I wanted to show you is the way this thing is built of these three pieces. This piece being like this, another piece like this, and this riveted to it. If my tolerance stack is off just a little bit, I have those rivets to make slightly larger or smaller to accommodate it. As it turns out, just like everything else on this car, it's all very, very close and it's just not an issue, not a problem. Radiator seal. Look right here. I put rev nuts in the top of the radiator. Drill those so that goes in there, that goes on there, that seals to the back of it, that screws on there, top and bottom. The radiator is in place. Then there's a uh, this is the dryer assembly for the uh, air conditioner. <laughs> like so, that mounts something like that right there. The uh, electric fans two of them come back around here. See I've got rib nuts already installed in this. That's just going to screw onto those. Oops. I screw onto those like so with those rib nuts. And this right here is totally sealed against the fan shroud as well, which is extremely important. But 
that's that's the entire radiator assembly and I wanted to get it a little farther along and look at it see what all it starts to look like again some of this stuff you just can't quite visualize uh, on, the, on the drawings let me show you another thing that I didn't visualize that I'm glad I looked at come around here the shifter this is a numeric brand shifter that they modify for me for, for uh, this type of car use. It's a Porsche competition shifter, but the Porsche shifter has a great big foot on it, and it makes it stick way up. If you used it in stock form, you'd look like one of those Ratfink models, you know, when the shifter's way up here like this. So they modify it and bring it down. These are, are Morse cables, cable craft, anybody's got those, but let me show you, we'll go into that a little later, but let me show you back here. Come back around here. This is a uh, shift mechanism by AE Auto, my buddy Eric Martin, not too far from here, who is a world-renowned authority on shifter mechanisms and uh, motor plates. Well, this right here, come on, can you come over here and look down? This is the bracket that usually catches the cables. goes in here like this. Then there's a pitman arm back here that catches this and goes like that. And that's how you get your in and out and forward and back motion of the shifter cables. And then you've got a bracket to put the pitman arm on, some bushings in here. A lot of uh, kind of complicated pieces and parts here. Got to looking at this shifter I said, well, wait a minute. Come uh, come back over here and look down in here. See, look look right down in here. See, this is your shifter arm for the forward and back. And it's always been a problem that those lines run right here in the way of the hydraulic line for your slave cylinder. I said, what if we move this right here, this, this arm, out this way, stop it right here, and pull from up here? Then what if this cable right here, instead of having a pitman on, just pulled in and out? So I built this little bracket right here, and oops, wrong bracket. This bracket right here, first try, second try. Cut a, t a dog bone out of here by hand, which was kind of interesting but fairly easy. This bracket goes right in here like this. This cable goes here through the bracket and comes over to the arm itself. And I have eliminated this. I have eliminated this. I have eliminated this. I have eliminated all of that hardware right there. There's stuff like that that you just don't see in a CAD model. But uh, now that that's done, I am extremely pleased with it. These cables, uh, Cablecraft has stores everywhere in the world. Uh, I like Control Cables Incorporated out of uh, California, but this is a simple Morse cable. Uh, it's a push-pull cable as opposed to like a throttle cable or something which is on a pull-only cable. This is the ultra-light. They have ultra-light, light, medium, heavy, so forth versions of this, but the ultra-light version is actually a 40 pound rating so unless we are hanging a sack of concrete from our shifter we're way good on that. Let me show you something else up here. On this shifter the Morse cables are 1032 all the poor stuff is metric. A few very simple adapters from uh, McMaster car and now then this will connect to this just fine that's what this is for. There's two ways of doing this. You can see a second dog bone here. That lines it up with the second way of doing it. This dimension right here, though, from here to the center is, is 7 inches, and that's a critical dimension. Same way back here. When I was looking at how to do this, I suddenly realized that this plate right here down to the arm would be 7 inches. This uh, little plate right here is located this way 7 inches. So I am perfectly good on that. Way happy with it. How long? 15 okay. Minutes. Is it over? over 15? Fifteen minutes. All right. Uh, almost. All right. Well, let's stop it right there, and we'll uh, make another video and cover a bunch of other stuff.